if you're like me and you've got something that's malfunctioning in your house, like your furnace system, for example, you do some research online, maybe you check out some YouTube videos to try to help you diagnose the problem and fix it yourself. Well, that's the situation I'm in. And I'm not an HVAC technician, I'm not an electrician, but I am a homeowner who likes to do as much work that I can around the house by myself and save as much money as I can. I've got an issue with my furnace. I've got an April Air zoned heating system. And the last couple of weeks of the heating season here, the heat has not been distributing itself correctly. And I did some looking online to try to figure out what's going on with my zoned system. And I couldn't find much data out there. So I figured out what's wrong with mine. And I'm hoping that this video might help you figure out what's wrong with yours. So if you've got a zoned system from April Air, it's got a April Air, it's got a uh, box like this somewhere in your furnace room, utility room like we're in right now. And that's the heart of the system right there. So right now, zone one, which is my first floor, is calling for heat. So that's upstairs. This bank of wires here is my zone two bank. And so zone one is calling for heat and it's closing zone two damper. So there's 24 volts of power coming from this block and going to the zone two damper. And that's supposed to close the dampers. The dampers are normally open if there's no power at all. Now, that's working correctly in this particular zone. And that damper is right there. And you can see that it's in the closed position like it's supposed to. And that circular motor underneath it is the actual actuator motor that cranks that closed. And you can see the wires leading to the actuator. There's red and the uh, white coming from the board that I just showed you going to the yellows. There's also two extra wires there that go to a, a different uh, trigger to turn on an auxiliary fan. And that's actually one of the ways that we realized this wasn't working. So that damper is working just fine. It's the other damper in my other zone, my zone one damper, that's not. I'm going to show you how we fixed it. All right, so I've gone upstairs, turned down the heat on my main floor, zone one, because I really only want to, I don't want to be confused by which zone is turning on which. And then I've turned up the thermostat in the basement zone, zone two. So that basement thermostat will be calling for heat and will energize the zone one damper to close it. And that's the one right over my head here. Now while we're waiting for that heat to kick on, here's a little trick. I actually bypassed this problem about a week ago after I figured out what the problem was and I had to order the parts. But because the parts were gonna be here in about a week, I actually physically removed the two dampers and swapped them. So I put the good damper in the spot that we needed a lot, which is the heat upstairs. We very rarely add the heat down to the basement anyway, so it didn't really matter for us if that zone didn't, that damper didn't work correctly for a while. So that may be able to get you to the point where I am now, and now just I have the time to fix it. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix it for the future or if we want heat in the other zone. Okay, so there's that call for heat in my basement or zone two. Zone one is energizing what it needs to energize. You can hear the inducer motor kicking on and things like that. If you've got other furnace problems not related to the zone heating system, I'd suggest you look at some other videos. There's a lot of other great ones that I've used out there to diagnose other problems with my furnace. But I should be getting 24 volts uh, AC, 24 volts AC from my um, terminals right here. I can test that with my digital multimeter. This one's not the greatest, but it works good enough for this stuff. Put it into volts AC. And I can actually test that voltage from right here. 
and 26. So that's it's a 24 volt system, anywhere between like 24 and 30 is good. So I know that this board is probably working correctly, which is great because I don't want to replace this board. I'm hoping that it's mo something more simple up the line. So the next thing I want to check is the other end of this wire, which is up at the damper. So here's where the damper is located. Now, even though there's supposed to be voltage coming to close this damper, it's open. There's a spring in here which opens it automatically whenever there's no power going to this, so it springs it back. Now yours should have six or four screws uh, fixing it to the actual ductwork. Uh, I've taken those out already because like I said I temporarily had this out and swapped over to another one. And there should be some tape all around it to help seal the gaps, okay? So I'm not getting any movement on my damper even though it should be having voltage here, it should be turning this actuator, this motor right here. So remember, um, I'm just a homeowner, not an electrician. And uh, if you mess up your system by doing this or electrocute yourself, don't blame me. All right, so I've disconnected the motor. I'm gonna test the voltage. Again, I've got two more other wires that go to a different auxiliary fan in this one. Don't worry about those. You probably might not have those on your system. But if I test this voltage, 26. Same voltage I was getting at the panel. So that tells me that there's power coming from the panel, it's coming up this wire, no breaks in the wire. So therefore, everything from here to the panel to the furnace seems to be good, which leads me to believe that there's something wrong with this um, actual damper unit. Maybe the motor's bad, maybe there's something else that's wrong inside. So, take off these four, or six in this case, screws that affix it to the ductwork after I cut all the tape off, and then we're gonna take it out of this ductwork. The duct hole that was cut in here happens to be uh, a little bit smaller than the actual flap inside there. So I need to actually manipulate this to get it to turn so that it'll come out a little bit easier. And then it just slides right out. Now, I happen to have a lot of other wires and a wall and things like that. It takes a little bit of manipulation to get it all the way out. That's what the unit looks like. It uh, spring holds it into the open position like this when it's not being energized. And mine happens to have a little bypass thing on here so it doesn't fully, fully close. That's how my HVAC uh, person set it up. And you can see that that spring, which I have to make sure I get together back correctly, springs it open when not in use. So let's put it on the bench and see what else we can figure out on it. All right, so I got the unit over on the bench here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna pop this motor off. It's got uh, just two small screws. And slides right out and you can see there's a little shaft on the end there and when you hook 24 volts of power to it you can see it's a uh, 24 volt motor when you hook 24 volts AC up to it 
this little shaft spins. And that spins this little gear inside here, which is supposed to activate this uh, damper. It's not, it's just spinning free. So that's a problem. So probably my issue is somewhere inside this thing. Now you probably want to verify that your motor is good. So if you have a 24 volt AC transformer lying around or want to go buy one um, for bench testing, you could do that, hook it up to power. And this motor, I thought it was gonna just like on off, on off, but actually it, it rotates slowly just a continual slow rotation. Um, I didn't have a spare transformer laying around, so what I did is I went back over to my system that I just showed you at the end of the wires where I measured the 28 six volts, hooked it back up, just left the motor dangling like this, had the system call for heat, and then just watched this shaft. And sure enough, it was rotating just fine. So it seems like the board is good, the wires running from the board to the motor are good, and the motor is good. So that leaves me with something in here. So now I'm going to investigate this more fully by taking it apart. So the first thing I want to do is just pop this, uh, I don't know what they call this, handle, off. That just pops right off. It's not screwed on or anything, but that's what you can manipulate this manually with. Pop that off and lay that aside. And then there are seven total screws. There's these six hex head ones and this Phillips head, which actually runs through the middle of this toggle gear thing. So take each one of those off. Put those somewhere where they won't roll away. we take this off what we can see is this is just that stopper this is the actual uh, gear the center part this part is just like a fixed part there's these two plastic nubs that keep its position on this plate it's only this inner gear that actually spins and what's supposed to be connected to that is this and here is our problem and this is what April Air calls a flexible drive belt flexible drive belt and you can see the end of that is busted off so what's supposed to happen is this when you wind that with the motor this gear winds or that drive belt winds up on here which causes this then to get pulled into the closed position. And then there's a spring inside here that when it releases and stops spinning, it allows it to spin back and close. So we need to replace this drive belt. And that's what I investigated and found out a week ago. So I went ahead and just swapped this out for the other good one and ordered from Supply House. Not that I have an advertisement from this, just the best price I found. A package of five of them because of course they're a vendor for HVAC supply and it was like 30 some dollars or something with shipping and I have five tried belts with some instructions so now we need to pop this out and figure out how to replace it all all right so I Cut out the instructions and you'll notice that the same flexible drive link belt can be used for this round damper or the old rectangular damper or the new rectangular damper. So I believe just about every April air damper out there is going to be using these same drive belts. And you can see there's one end, it's got a little bit of a thicker connection on it. It's going to slide into one of those two um, drive pieces. Other end's a little bit thinner. And then there's gear type teeth on one side and it's flat on the other. I popped out this broken piece here. 
or the, the drive belt with the broken piece on it. And you can see there I've got the fatter end in this piece. So I know that's got to go on there. And you can see the teeth are um, facing this way. And so eventually, when we replace it, when you turn the motor on, this is going to wrap uh, like this. And so this is actually part of the, the leverage to get the drive belt to turn the system that closes the dam. I mentioned that spring. The spring is actually inside here, and you can see how this piece is flat on the edges and round on the other ends. And there's the spring. So when you turn this part, that's how it actually springs. And the fitting for it has got the same flats. So we, we know it's either got to go this way or this way. Unfortunately, I didn't pay very good attention when I took it apart. So you'll want to pay more attention to that than I did. And then you can see there's this hex, uh, not hex, but a four-way connection here that goes into this top of this connection there. So um, start replacing the parts and see if we can get it back together. Looks like I'm just going to slide this out like this. Okay, so remember that was like that. Drive belts were toward the big piece there, so I'm going to slide this back in with the fat end. That went in a lot easier than it came out. Okay, so there's that part. Now this drive gear here, um, inside that little gap right there, was another little broken off piece that I fished out of there so it's just a, a tiny nub end so that's eventually where the other end's going to go after we figure out how to get it all back together um, so let's see how it's gonna go okay so after a little trial and error I think I figured out the best way to describe how to get this put back together we know that this uh, damper the default position or the, uh, the non-springed position is open. So we know that the damper has to be facing this way to be open. This piece, as I described earlier, has got flats on two sides that have to match up with flats on those two sides. So, using my power of reasoning, I figured out that when, if it goes in this way, this little gear, sorry, this little gear, uh, when I operate this motor, it's going to wind this gear, which is going to be fished down through here, and that spring, I'm forcing against that spring, is going to close the damper, and then when it stops winding, it's going to open. So I need to get the correct two of these four to connect to the correct damper to the two while it's in this open position. All right, so like I showed, I've got the, um, got the damper sitting so that when I put this back together, it's going to be words facing me, like I'm reading a book laying down. And I'm gonna hold this damper and I'm gonna put this in with the flexible drive belt facing to my left. And I'm gonna slide, look where the flats are. I'm gonna slide those two pieces in. I'm gonna check underneath and make sure that it sits all the way down into those flats. So that's that part. going down. And then this piece has the two nubs that are going to match up with the cover, but there's also a nub on the bottom here, and that matches up this hole right here. This is the screw hole, that center Phillips screw that I showed you. So this gear hole has to go there and that little nub there, and that sits together like that. So now, 
this drive belt. Going to now you know why everybody in these YouTube videos say, "Oh, it's hard to do with one hand." Sit in that notch there. So now when that dry belt tightens, it's going to pull that down to open, or rather to close the damper. Now remember, we have to make room for the shaft of this motor to go in that hole. So find yourself a small tool, I just got a uh, set of uh, Allen wrenches here, pick or something like that, and you need to get this end down far enough to where you can now pull you can now pull that back clearance so now you can see that that shaft is going to be able to fit down there it's got two flats on it doesn't matter which way it goes um, as long as it sits in that hole now I think we're ready for the reassembly so I've got my top plate and I've got to look for the hole that the shaft is going to go through and the two nubs, plastic, probably some sort of fancy name for those, right? Like index retaining nodules or something. All right, so now six holes pretty well lining up. This one Phillips screw is going to go all the way through this bigger hole, and these two smaller holes retain the motor. So, let's get those, uh, let's get this in here. I'm going to start with that. Phillips screw. Hold your ears. Okay, so that, that at least puts it all together. Check, um, check everything is working right. Make sure that that connection is on there right. Make sure the spring is not uh, clicking like it was earlier, because I don't think I had it assembled right. And... Spins, pulls that together. So, uh, I I solve the problem here. So now I just need to put the other six screws back in. This uh, damper is open, so we're going to put the little handle back in here, push that down, that allows me to manipulate it, test the spring again, etc. And lastly, the motor. So I just need to get it to go in, doesn't matter if the screw holes are going to line up yet, but I can go ahead and put that in there. Whatever way is easiest. As long as some way is easy. There we go. And now the spring, um, the the motor itself. You could sp you can just spin that. It didn't line up very well. Uh, you don't need to hook it up to power. You can just turn that. It's a little hard to turn, but it um, 
definitely is, you can turn it. So, put that in anywhere and spin it so that the holes line up. Two little screws back in. Those don't need to be very tight. Snug. Yeah, now it's time to put that back up into the hole screw it back into the damper, tape it up, hook your wires back up, should be good to go. You'll want to make sure that you tape these seams all back up. You can see um, got a pretty big cap on the bottom of mine. Each fat guy did a pretty aggressive hole, but you tape that all up with some high quality foil tape and be good to go. But first, you probably want to test it. I know we're confident in our fix, but it's good to test along the way. I had previously marked this the white. I don't have any idea whether it really matters. 20 volt AC, whether positive or negative really matters or not. Like I said, not an electrician. Just a homeowner. Who knows just enough to fix some things and get into trouble with others. Let's uh, get this zone to call for heat. I marked mine, by the way, so that I can remember five years from now when something else goes wrong. Zone one damper, because that confused me for a while, which one was supposed to be closing and which one was supposed to remain open. But both of them were remaining open, so I knew that was a problem. All right, let's get zone one, rather zone two, calls for heat. Let's see if the damper works. Heat. Should be getting power to zone one. Should be getting power to this wire. That little motor should be starting to wind up. So there we go. Sorry for the camera change. My GoPro died. Just more evidence that. Uh, I'm not a YouTube guy, it's my first fix-it video, but hopefully this one is helpful to you. Um, if it's still not working, check your connections. Make sure you have uh, good connections to your power lines as well as your motor lines. Check the motor, see if it's spinning, etc, etc. After the furnace cycles through, the power goes off, that spring should because the motor itself, as if you try to turn the shaft, you see is hard to turn. It doesn't flop back. Um, the motor spins open and it lets that drive belt open slowly and then you know, it should go back to the default or the closed position. 
Now I just got to tape up all the gaps here and put this fixed to rest. I hope this helped you guys. Um, like I said, very few, only one other um, video I saw about these dampers, which gave me a little bit of a starting point, but not really a diagnosis step. So thanks for watching and uh, let me know if you have questions on this. I can't, can't guarantee I can help you though, but good luck.